Hey Killer Bees, it's Paula B from PaulaBeeFitness.com and on tap today I've got a great cardio and weights workout that is perfect for women of a certain age. You guys, today we are all low impact cardio, which means that there is absolutely no jumping and no transitions to the ground. And for my friends who are into this kind of thing, there is no repeating the exercises today. Now you are going to need at least one pair of dumbbells. I'm going moderate today because I'm taking this whole workout at a moderate pace. You are welcome to set your own challenge. And if you need a new pair of dumbbells, make sure that you open Open up the description box below so that you can go over to Amazon and get the exact three pair set that I use so that you always have the right choice for the day. You guys, there's a warm up and a cool down today, so when you're ready for this one, I'm totally ready. Let's go! All right, you guys, let's get moving and grooving, and that means that we're going to get started with some arm circles with high knees. Oh, oh yes, we are. We're getting started with these arm circles that feel amazing to me, you guys. Let me just tell you a little something. There's a reason why I chose moderate weights today. There's a reason why I am taking today at a very moderate pace. Yesterday was a bit of a push day for me and I'm feeling every bit of it. And here's what I want you to know about working out after a push day. Well, okay, it's always, always, always a good idea to work out moderately, but especially when you're feeling a little bit sore. It's totally okay to work out when you have sore muscles, but you definitely want to be cautious about how hard you are pushing. If you don't know what I'm talking about, there's going to be here on the screen, but down in the information box below, the description box, there is a way to download this five-page information resource that I made for you for how to get the most out of every single workout so that it works for your goal. Because because here's the thing, my friends, there are a lot of fitness trainers out there who basically act as if every single day should be go, 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 push, 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 go harder, go faster, do more. And I want you to know that is not true at all. Let's go ahead and do some arm crossers with booty kickers. The fact is, especially at our age, but honestly, even if you are younger, you do not need to go hard every day. There is a lot of benefit to be had from going either moderate every day, if we weight loss is your goal, for example, or going moderate most of the time and really only pushing once in a while. The fact is, if you push every single day, at some point you are going to get totally burnt out of that. <laughs> bringing that kind of intensity every day, like I honestly, I just can't even, I can't even picture it anymore. But bringing that kind of intensity every day, mentally, physically, it takes its toll. There is such a great place in the world for a beautiful, moderate workout. And I tell you what, today's workout out at some points might not feel very moderate. This is this is challenging enough that if today is a push day for you, oh my goodness, you're going to get a good push out of it. Let's go ahead and do some welcome to my homes. I've got the handy dandy gym boss here set for intervals of 40 seconds of work and just 10 seconds of rest. So yes, we do get to rest today a little bit, but it's pretty much non-stop. We're going cardio, then strength, then cardio again, then strength. And it's a little tiny, it's a a handful of exercises in each type. There's absolutely no repeating today, which is super fun and makes the workout go by very quickly. But the exercises themselves, kind of challenging. If you, today is a push day, please feel free to push yourself. Go fast when we're doing cardio. Pick up heavy weights when we're doing the weight section. Make today your own. Just know, however, I am demonstrating my moderate. So that might be your moderate. It might be your push. It might be way too easy for you. It might be way too hard for you. It might be anything in between. You are always in charge of getting your best workout. And let's let's work out, my friends. We're going to start with a reach across crunch. And it's just what it sounds like. It's a reach across and a crunch. A reach across and a crunch. This is our cardio section. So I've got a handful of low impact cardio exercises for us. I did that on purpose. I know that when we do that warm up, that my heart rate starts to come up, but it's not up super high. I also know that even though we do work through all planes of motion, getting all of our joints ready, that sometimes I need a little bit more before I'm picking up heavy things. It's why I almost always start with cardio when we do cardio and weights. You might feel differently. It really depends on what you like and what your body likes. For me personally, I really like to move a little bit more. So 10 seconds of rest right now. Not really moving, but 10 seconds of rest right now. And coming up next, we're doing butter churns. My friends, you might also know these as hoe downs. Your hand is going up and down in front of your body, both hands together, doing basically a delt pull down. But one foot is kicking out at a time. When your hands are down, your foot is out. When your hands are up, both feet are in. This 
for whatever reason, reminds me of churning butter as though I have ever churned butter in my life. I have not. Actually, no, that's not true. Okay, did you guys know that I used to be a preschool teacher? A long, long time ago at this point. I used to teach preschool, and one of the things that we did was made butter with the kids. You know, like with a little baby food jar, and you put the milk in it, and then you shake, 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 for much, much longer than three and four year olds actually want to. <laughs> 10 seconds of rest. Coming up next, we're doing half jacks, which is just what it sounds like. We're doing one half of a jumping jack at a time, your right half, and then your left half. Again, take this, whoo, doggies, at whatever pace you need to, to get either a moderate day or a push day out of it. So I have technically made butter <laughs> because I tell you what, doing that activity, I feel, I feel reasonably certain that we only did that like one year because, because nobody had the patience. Butter takes a long time. If you make your own butter or if you have ever made your own butter, you will have a fine appreciation for just how convenient it is to go to the grocery store and just buy butter because it's not easy. That's why we only did it for 40 seconds. Here in this exact workout. <laughs> My friends, 10 seconds of rest. Coming up next, we're doing toy soldiers. You're gonna have both hands up overhead, reaching your opposite hand down towards your opposite kicking foot. Once those hands goes up, oh my gosh, your heart rate comes up. Now, if this is a moderate day for you and you are already finding that your heart rate's a little bit high, you, there's a couple of different ways you can make it more moderate. You can keep your hands down a little bit lower. You could go a little bit slower. You can take, a break if you need to, a little bit longer than the 10 seconds I'm doing. Honestly, it doesn't really matter how you moderate your heart rate. I would prefer if you try to keep going as much as possible, but go slower and easier so that your heart rate doesn't just spike and then plummet, spike and then plummet, 10 seconds of rest. And here comes our last low impact cardio exercise for this little section, something I call ding-dongs. We're gonna have our hands swinging from side to side and one foot kicking out from side to side. I absolutely love this one. I feel like I'm knocking myself over. I should really call this weeble wobbles, honestly, even more so than ding dongs, but I'm sure there's some reason why I should not use a copyrighted name in my exercises, right? You guys, when it beeps again, we're gonna take 10 seconds of rest, but we're gonna pick up our dumbbells. And we're doing five strength exercises in a row, kind of like these five cardio exercises in a row. And I want you to know that strength is a very different pace. Even if you are using, in fact, especially if you are using moderate dumbbells like I'm gonna be demonstrating, make sure that you take this at a strength pace. Go ahead and grab whatever dumbbells you're using, heavy if it's a push day, moderate if it's a moderate day. We're gonna start with our hands right here at our shoulders. We're gonna do a squat with an alternating press up. So just one hand at a time. Now, your heart rate is gonna stay up a little bit. I mean, we're working out, my friends. If you're moving, your heart is moving at an elevated rate. However, I want you to think about, even if what you have today is honestly on the light side of moderate, this is not cardio. We're thinking about excellent form. We're really thinking about keeping your core pulled in nice and tight. We're coming down low in this squat. And then we're pressing up and making sure that our biceps is right next to our ears. And now we've got 10 seconds of rest. Coming up next, we're doing bent over row with a kickback. So we're gonna have our feet about hip width apart. Core is pulled in super tight. Push your hips behind you so that your back is straight and you're at a 45 degree angle. You're gonna row those dumbbells up and then kick them back behind you. Oh my goodness, this is triceps work. Excellent job. Keeping your arms super close to your body, really, really, really thinking about excellent form. You're not just shrugging your arms up and then swinging your whole arm backward. Your elbow is actually at a fixed point right about the level of your back, and then you're just moving your forearms in a controlled motion by using those triceps. Ha, ah, 10 seconds of rest. Oh my gosh, coming up next. We're doing a side kick with a side raise and we're going to cross your body. So that means that if you're kicking with your right hand, you're raising with your left arm. And yes, <laughs> this is going to require a fair amount of 
oh my gosh, balance and coordination. Couldn't even come up with the words because I was thinking so carefully. That side raise, you're pulling from the middle of your back. That side kick, you're squeezing, squeezing, squeezing from your glutes. No matter which direction you're moving, your core is pulled in super tight. You're standing up straight and tall. You're breathing through it. Ooh, but you are also squeezing through it. This is what I was saying about how your heart rate, 10 seconds of rest, it's not really gonna come down even though we're moving slower. Coming up next, we're doing kicking curls. So we're doing biceps curls, which means that you're gonna lock your elbows right into your waist here. We're gonna kick forward while we curl, while we do a biceps curl. Now here's the thing. This kick isn't a power kick. It's not a cardio kick. This is actually squeezing from the top of your thighs. Oh my goodness. This is excellent work for your knees, as a matter of fact, strengthening those quadriceps muscles while strengthening your biceps also. Oh my gosh. You guys, making sure that your core is pulled in super, super tight. All strength work, really all work. You wanna make sure that your core is pulled in, but specifically this one because we're balancing and hanging for so long, 10 seconds of rest. Okay, okay, coming up next. We're doing welcome to my homes with a kick. So your hands are gonna start right here at your chest level. We're going to open up one hand, oh my gosh, out to the side while knocking myself off balance. <laughs> Okay. okay, let me focus here. We're kicking again, but the kick is not the focus this time. For me, the focus is definitely much more on the upper body. So you can do a little bit more, honestly, of a lazy kick. This is so much more about pulling from your middle of your back and your abs. Oh my gosh, which are definitely struggling for me today. This balance work, always a challenge, but sometimes it's more of a challenge than others. And thank goodness we're done with those. Let's get those dumbbells completely out of the way. That was our strength, our first strength session. Coming up next, we're gonna do double knees and we're gonna have our hands up overhead, bringing both hands down to one knee on one side, two times, and then two times on the other side, doing that little bit of a pivot in between. Two knees over here, two knees over here. Oh yes, we're back to cardio and I really had to think about that. We've changed gears again. This is the thing about today's workout, it really is a workout for your brain as well as your body. We really have to think, what kind of work is this? What kind of position am I in? What kind of, what kind of speed am I going? What kind of a workout am I doing? Because frankly, at this point, if this is a moderate day for you, it might feel like it's a bit of a push. And if this is a push day for you, 10 seconds of rest, you might be pushing too hard, you might be pushing too little, you might want to push less. Coming up next, we're gonna do punch down tap outs. You know, this is the thing about a push day. Here we go, we're punching down and tapping out to the side. This is cardio, we're taking it whatever pace your heart can sustain for whatever your effort is today. The thing about a push workout is right about now, about halfway through, you're gonna wish that you weren't pushing. <laughs> you're gonna be looking at my moderate pace and going, oh man, I I want to go like that. I want to pick up something lighter. I don't want to keep pushing the whole way through. But my friends, here's the thing about deciding at the beginning of your workout what kind of a workout you're going to have. Once you've decided, all you have to do is make it happen. And then, I mean, here's the great news, 10 seconds of rest. We're coming up next, we're going to do booty kicker elbow swings. So our elbows are swinging and our feet are doing booty kickers. It's pretty self-explanatory, <laughs> which is why I love this one. So we're doing a booty kicker with some big elbow swings, really feeling a nice stretch on the front of your quads since we were using them so much during our last strength session. But here's the thing. There's a couple of things about following through. Number one, it just feels so good to keep your promise to yourself. Honestly, it is one of the nicest things that you can do for yourself. When you intend to have a push day, have a push day. You're going to feel amazing afterwards. And the other thing about that is if you do kind of peter out halfway or do end up start pushing halfway during a moderate workout, you're not quite getting the full benefit. It's not as good for you, 10 seconds of rest, as it would be if you were following through on your promise. Coming up next, we are doing letter K's. Both hands are gonna be up overhead. We're gonna bring one hand out to the side with that same foot and then the same thing on the other side. Basically, 
basically it's almost like a half jack again with one arm and one leg, except we're starting from the top instead of starting from the bottom. And on one side we are forming the letter K, and on the other side we are not. That's why I came up with this name, you guys. Speaking of being a preschool teacher, this is something that I used to do with my kids. We used to form letters out of our bodies just so that well, first of all, because I mean, they were three and four, you know, you got to get those wiggles out somehow, but also so that they could have some kind of kinetic understanding of where their bodies are in space and time. It is something I am still, 10 seconds of rest at 50 years old, still working on. <laughs> Might as well start them young. Coming up next, we're doing rainbow kicks. Hands are going up overhead, back and forth like a rainbow while we are kicking out to one side and then out to the other side. Now, this is definitely one that can start to feel very push day, but if you are keeping it moderate, keep your hands a little bit lower. Keep your kick a little bit lower. Keep your pace a little bit slower. Do whatever you have to do to moderate, my friend. I know, I know you just want to follow along with me. I know you do. You just want to be like, okay, there she is. I'm going to do that exact same thing. But I'm going to tell you the same thing I told my three and four year olds. You have to know what you're doing. You have to manage you. Don't worry about what I'm doing. I'm getting my best workout, 10 seconds of rest. And hey, you guys, we're back to strength again. I love this. Go ahead and grab your dumbbells and we're going to start, ooh, doggies with a curtsy front punch. Okay, hands here at your shoulders. We're gonna come down in a curtsy. Oh my gosh, while doing a front punch. Take your time, this is strength. Thinking about strength pace, even if you have light slash moderate dumbbells. We're not going fast, this isn't cardio. My heart rate is up plenty high. I would rather have you focus on using excellent form and getting the absolute most out of these exercises than simply going fast. Here's the thing about a moderate workout. My friends, it's still work. <laughs> like, no matter how you slice it, I don't care how moderate your dumbbells are, you, ah, 10 seconds of rest. You are toning, you are working. When it beeps again, we're doing peekaboo high knees. That means we're gonna have our hands just about as tall, uh, hands about the size of your head. Your elbows are at shoulder height. We're going to do a uh, peekaboo by opening up those elbows wide while bringing up one high knee at a time. Now here's the thing, there is no rest for your upper body in this exercise. And it really, it doesn't matter if you go fast or slow, but I'm gonna encourage you to go slow because that's even harder on your balance. Oh my gosh, thinking about excellent form. I don't care how light your dumbbells are, they get heavy at 40 seconds here at shoulder height or higher rather, at the height of your head. Oh my goodness, your chest is working, your back is working, oh, your core is working, 10 seconds of rest. Coming up next, oh my gosh, this one's very much work. Also, we're doing letter X's. It means that we're forming the top half of a letter X, so feet about hip width apart, core is pulled in tight. Weights start here at your stomach. We're gonna form the top half half of the letter X and then the bottom half of the letter X. Now you're trying to get to full extension with your elbows and your hands are going to be out from your body at I think that's like a 45 degree angle. I'm sure it's I'm sure it's not exactly, but what I mean is they're not directly up overhead and they're not directly out to the side. We're making the top half of that X, ooh, and then the bottom half of the X. Making sure that you are not swaying your back when you have your hands out at full extension. Core is pulled in so tight. 10 seconds of rest, oh my gosh. Okay, coming up next, still work. <laughs> Weirdly, still in the middle of a workout. <laughs> We're gonna do triangles. Feet even wider than hip width apart. You're gonna have one hand going up overhead while the other hand is rolling down the side of your leg. Now here's the thing. That hip on the other side there is going to jut out to the side. This is working your whole hip complex as well as your abs and obliques and yes, absolutely, those arms and shoulders. This is a full body exercise, making sure that your core is pulled in super duper tight, taking a second or two here in the middle to find your form, to keep it moderate if you are doing a moderate workout today, to Oh my gosh, even if you are doing a push day, making sure that you have excellent form, 10 seconds of rest. 
coming up next. One of my favorite exercises, and that's why we're finishing our strength circuit with it. Not a circuit, it's deadlifts. <laughs> Feet about hip width apart. Ah, back is super straight. Push your hips back behind you and then pull your hips back underneath you. Push and pull is the best way to think about deadlifts. I know sometimes when you're just looking at it, it looks like you're bending over. And I mean, technically, sure, I am. I mean, I could pick something up off the ground, but it has nothing to do with bending. Your back is super, super, super straight. Your core is pulled in very tight and your butt is doing all of this work. You're gonna feel it in your hamstrings as well. Maybe even the rest of your hip complex, but it is not coming whew, from the middle of your body. Okay, 10 seconds of rest. Let's go ahead and put those dumbbells down. Hooray! You guys, we made it through all the strength and now we've got one more little section of cardio and here's what we're gonna start with is low swing tappers. I really had to think about what I was doing. And this is cardio again, which means that we're picking up the pace again. My heart rate came down a little bit, but I think I'm actually sweating more <laughs> from the strength part. I tell you what guys, this is why I love to go back and forth between cardio and strength. You really have to think about what you're doing. You really have to pay attention to your workout. And honestly, if I teach you nothing else in the world, pay attention to your workout. This is, this is so important. Oftentimes when we're just going through the motions, just doing what the girl on the screen is doing, we're not thinking about our body. You're not thinking about your core. You're not thinking about the results that you want to get from it. 10 seconds of rest. Coming up next, we're doing windmill tap backs. Going to have our hands wide and our feet wide, reaching our opposite hand down towards our opposite, whatever you can reach. I always say foot, because I mean, technically that is what you're reaching for. I can't remember the last time I touched my foot though when we were doing windmill tap backs on this one because it is a cardio exercise I would like you to err on the side of going quickly rather than trying to reach your toe specifically making sure that you're using good form your core is pulled in tight your hands are up keeping your heart rate up but you don't have to touch your toe because that is so much more about flexibility than heart health which is what we're working on when we do this cardio my friends when it beeps again whoo we're gonna get 10 seconds of rest. Okay, okay. I know, we're near the end of the workout. I've only got a couple of exercises left. Coming up next, we're doing walking stars. You might know it as a box step, but I had to change its name so that I could make myself do it. <laughs> this is another one of those exercises for your brain as well as your body. Your hand goes up while your foot steps forward. Then you step your other hand and your other foot and then step them back. Now I am changing leader hand and leader foot each time so that it is more of a challenge for me. You're picking an apple and you're putting it in your pocket, my friends. <laughs> a long, long time ago, I don't remember what I called it the very first time I did these because I'd never heard of a box step before. And one of my very dear friends, Karen, told me that it was a box step. And so I looked it up and I was technically speaking doing it correctly, but for whatever reason that name, it just didn't work with my brain. 10 seconds of rest. And then coming up next, we're doing big arm side shuffles. As soon as I started calling it walking stars, for some reason, my body is capable of doing what my brain wants it to do. Big arm side shuffles, hello sweet floof, are just what they sound like. You're making a nice big circle in front of your body while you are shuffling to the side. Now, if this is a push day for you, you are totally welcome to come down in a deep curtsy lunge at the end here. And that's really, I mean, that's gonna be totally up to you, my friend. I am not. I'm really glad that I chose a moderate workout today. I'm still feeling a little bit sore from yesterday, but I've got that heart rate going. I've got those endorphins flowing. I'm feeling really good right now, and I hope you are too. When it beeps again, we're gonna get 10 seconds of rest. Ah, and then our last exercise. Ta -da -da. It's squat jacks. When your hands are down, your hips are down. When your hands are up, your hips are up. Hands are doing jumping jacks. Feet are doing squats. <laughs> now I do like to step side to side on this one for no good reason other than it just feels good to me. Help yourself to go as low as you want to go or not. This is cardio. We're thinking about moving quickly while using excellent form. So if you don't love squats, can't get super deep on them, feel free to just take this quickly with a little bit of a tuck down, making sure that your hips are going back behind you rather than your knees coming forward over your toes. When it beeps again, you guys, we will be done. But yeah, I know you saw this coming. We're definitely not going to be finished. We've got 10 seconds of rest. 
And I've got the hardest thing of all for us, balance. Yes, we're gonna do a front kick, back kick on each side. So one interval, I'm gonna start with my left leg where we kick to the front and then kick to the back. This is all balance, all the time. If you need a chair, a sofa, a wall, a something next to you, please do that. Oh my gosh, I'm never gonna tell you, even if this is a push day for you, I'm never gonna tell you to struggle through an exercise. Do what you can to use your best form to get your best workout. As you can see, for me, that means tapping down sometimes. I'm still working on my balance, my friends. It's always, always practice. This was not a pop quiz today. This was not the final exam. <laughs> This is just practice, 10 seconds of rest. Coming up next, gonna do that exact same thing on the other side, and then that will be it. That is the entirety of our finisher today. I don't have anything else surprising or scary or difficult or balancey or, or anything else for us except some really lovely stretching. You guys, oh my gosh. Making sure that your core is pulled in. We are thinking about maintaining excellent form all the way through this workout. I know I'm already starting to think about cooling down, already starting to look forward to that stretch, but let's make sure that we finish strong no matter what kind of a workout you had intended to have today. I know, I know that you've had an excellent workout today. Oh, and there it is. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the timer. Gonna do a little taps here for a couple of seconds. And then let's do some arm circles. Let's stretch that out. Oh my gosh. Tapping your feet rather than just standing directly still. Honestly, it's one of those ways to bring your heart rate down without letting it plummet. You know, it's not, I'm not gonna say it's dangerous. Like it's, it's not deadly, but it's not good for you to go from a very high heart rate to suddenly doing absolutely nothing. It's why I do always encourage you by having the cool down here on screen to do a cool down after your workout. I know, I know. Sometimes I'm very tempted to just finish my workout and then get on with my day. Like, I have stuff to do. I have editing to do. I have other desk things. I have questions and emails and I have a bunch of stuff that requires a lot of sitting down that's waiting for me. But it's just such a nice thing to do for your body. Kind of like, kind of like following through on your intention with your workout. It's just a good idea to cool down and get the best out of your effort today. Let's go ahead and do some arm openers. Ah, oh, that feels so good on your chest. And then arm closers. Give yourself a big hug and a pat on your back. Job well done today, my friends. Like really well done. Now here's the thing. If today is a push day for you, even if you took today at your fastest pace with your heaviest weights, you might be like, you know what? I've got a little bit more in me to make this a pushy push. Trust me, my friends, I have something else for you. I've got a whole plethora of 10 minute videos and I will find one for you that's a good compliment for today. Low impact, all standing, some weights, some not, some kind of something that can be a little bit more for your push day. If today is a moderate day for you, I will caution you that this was absolutely enough. I know, I know sometimes we think to ourselves, oh, but I can do more even on a moderate day. My friend, you don't have to. <laughs> If, if you want to, I'm not, I mean, I can't stop you. I'm not the moderate police, but I will tell you this was enough today. I do have an extended stretching session for you though. More standing, ah, more stretching, more cooling down. On the bottom of the screen, there is the letter P and that is an invitation to go over to Patreon where you can make a monthly pledge that helps me make free workouts for all of us. And thank you so much if you choose to support like that. I really appreciate it. On the other side of the screen, there's a picture of me and that is a subscribe button. Make sure that you click that and the bell notification so that YouTube will let you know every time I upload a new workout. Thank you so, so much for working out with me today. I really appreciate it. Make sure you subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.